I spoke with this witness on January 8th, 2006, for more than 40 minutes. This man and his wife were returning from a trip from Florence, Alabama. They were watching the sun set as they drove along the Trace Parkway in a generally southwestern direction. They had just crossed the Mississippi-Alabama state line and had traveled approximately three to four miles into Mississippi as they approached mile marker 307. The witness said that he saw what initially appeared to be a person jogging along the right side of the road in a southwestern direction. He emphasized that it's fairly common to see joggers along the trace, so he didn't think too much about it at first glance. The witness said that when approaching that mile marker, the road is hilly and there's a slight downhill incline at that point. At the bottom of the hill, the road curves to the right when traveling southwest on the trace. There was a vehicle approaching in the opposite direction and was just entering the witness's field of vision as he topped the hill just prior to mile marker 307. The vehicle traveling in the opposite direction had also just topped the hill as well. As both vehicles came into view of each other on tops of their respective hills, the animal appeared to panic. Both cars traveled down their hills, around the curve, and passed each other. The witness slowed to nearly a stop, while the other car appeared to pass by without slowing at all. The animal was initially traveling at a normal speed for a jogger when he first noticed it, but then it suddenly began moving quickly and appeared to be running at about the speed a deer would sprint as both vehicles entered the curve. As it crossed the road from right to left, it lost its balance and tipped, nearly falling down. After catching its balance, it bounded off into the woods. It had its back towards the hem until it turned across the road. The closest he came to it was roughly 25 to 30 yards, and it ran between the two cars and roughly equal distance between the vehicles. He said it was solid black and was even illuminated by the sun, which was still in the sky at this point. He said the entire observation lasted only a matter of seconds, and his full attention was focused on it for roughly two. It happened so quickly that he didn't even have the time to say look to his wife, who was also in the car with him. He thinks the sighting took place with the bounds of Tishomingo State Park. He emphasized that he did not pay much attention to it until it panicked and began moving very quickly. He got a side profile of it as it crossed. He said its head did not look human, and appeared to be a little raised in the back and appeared to slope towards the front. He described it as very stocky with a muscular build. When it tripped, it swung its arms out to catch its balance. He said the hands appeared to be much larger, proportionally than a human's, and the arms appearing to be longer, proportionally than a normal human arm. While the animal was running along the highway, the arms were up like a human, just like they would be when jogging. The surrounding terrain is steep hills and large boulders. Bear Creek even runs through here. An area adjacent to this location is called the Freedom Hills. It's called that because it was a favorite hiding area for escaped slaves prior to the Civil War. It's very possible a large wild beast might be roaming through this area that resembles that of what they call a Bigfoot. My mother and I had taken my young Doberman to the Honey Island Swamp to let him run and get some exercise. We had driven to the end of the road where the bridge had collapsed and you could not go any further back by car. The area is just a few miles from the Honey Island exit off of Interstate 59 in Mississippi. The road was built up about 8 feet from the ground since it flooded back there. The area around the road was swampy, having lots of trees. The ground was covered in leaves since it was fall. We had been there about 10 minutes, and my dog had pretty much been staying on the road as he ran around. I went to get something out of the car, and when I began walking back to where my mother was on the road, 
She was looking out into the wooded area at something. She pointed out what appeared to be something dark beside a large cypress tree. We could not make out a head, but it appeared to be gray and black, covered in fur, and was actually a torso. Whatever we were looking at was large. It stood above some bushes, and the top part was behind the branches of the tree. It had to have been well over six feet tall, since the bushes were at least three feet tall. It definitely was not another tree, because the texture was so different, and the big tree next to it looked different. It was approximately 1 p.m. The sun was bright. The light was dappled through the tree cover, but we could see that it was shining off of what appeared to be hair, or something with a wiry, hairy texture. It even seemed to shift back and forth, as if you were to shift your weight from one leg to another. If I had to guess, it was probably 50 to 75 feet away from us. We could not get a real good look at it. We did not hear or smell anything, and my dog did not seem to notice anything out of the ordinary. After looking at it for at least two to three minutes, we got very uncomfortable, decided that we would drive a mile or so up past one of the bridges on the way back to the interstate. We put my dog in the car and drove at least a mile up the road before we stopped again to let my dog back out. We had been there approximately five minutes when we heard footsteps in the woods. We could hear them getting closer. This time, my dog picked up on the sound and became alert. We could hear it. We could hear it stop, then move forward a few steps a couple of times. We couldn't see anything, but my dog was definitely trying to figure out what he was hearing. We got a little scared, so we loaded up again. This time, drove up to where there were some nature trails and a shooting range, probably at least two miles up the road. We got out of the car again, and were not there for two minutes when we heard what sounded like something running through the woods toward us. At that point, my dog got so terrified that he ran back to the car and hit the closed door, just trying to get back in. My mother and I ran to the car. All three of us got out there as fast as we could. We never saw what was making the noise in the woods, but whatever it was was big enough to make a lot of noise, both walking and especially running. After leaving and having major discussion about what had happened, my mother and I got our nerve up to go back to the end of the road later that day. So now it's about 4 p.m., and we wanted to see what we had seen earlier, if it was still there. When we got there, we could not find what we had seen before. We saw what we were pretty sure was the big tree, but we did not see what was by it originally, and we were not brave enough to go down into the wooded area for a closer inspection. We basically left with even more questions than we started out with. We never had a clear view of what we saw, but what we heard definitely scared us. Also, before I forget, I once met a girl that told me that her family used to actually camp in the Honey Island Swamp, and that something came up one night while they were sitting around the campfire. She said that her dad and uncle scared it off by shooting guns in the air, but not before one of her family members managed to get a couple of pictures of it. She said they weren't very clear, but that you can definitely tell there was something there. She said that they had sent them to LSU for them to review. I did not know her name. I only met her once. She told me about this at least five years before even my experience took place. I had went and hung a stand on a tree the day before hunting deer in an area north of Sardis Lake on public land. I knew I was the only person in there because the trails hadn't been used for some time. I rode in about two miles and then walked roughly 300 yards to where I had hung my climber. It was just about daybreak. I was 20 or so feet up a pine tree when I heard what sounded like somebody beating a large stick against a tree. 
A ways away, I spotted some movement in the area. It's where the sound came from. Whatever it was, was very brown and tall. My first thinking was it was a bear. So, using my binoculars, it was about 200 yards from me and dawn. So I pulled up my rifle to look through the scope, hoping I could see it better. It wasn't a bear. It did not have ears on top of its head, and its face was flat. It was at least eight feet tall, and stood just like a man. I noticed the skin was a grayish green, and the hair was thin. It was so startled, I stood up. It turned toward my direction, and knew I was there. It leaned its head back, as if it were smelling the air, then took off. It moved 40 or so yards in a few seconds and was gone. I was shaking badly, climbed straight down. I could not believe what I had seen, so I started walking in the direction that I had seen it. I walked over to a hill where it had slid and left a track. It was human-looking, the foot track. This scared me because I was trying to tell myself it was just a bear. Then... A sound came from the woods that sounded just like a whoop. I hurried back, got my stand, and left those woods. That has been six years ago now. Every time I told anybody my story, they made fun of me. So, I've been reserved about letting anybody know. But recently, a friend of mine had an encounter he does not want to let anybody know about. He thinks people will think he's crazy. So, I found the BFRO and amazed at by how many people have seen the same things I have. When I was eight or nine years old, my sister, some friends and I were swimming in a small watering hole, more like a wide spot in a creek, behind the military housing, probably 400 yards into the woods. I wasn't swimming. I was sitting down at the side of the water hole with my feet in the water, but kind of drawn up beside me, and my sister was sitting between my legs in the water. We were all just playing around, being pretty loud, and I don't know if I had heard something. I caught some movement out of the corner of my eye. My attention was drawn to a large bush on the other side of the swimming hole. I sat there, staring at this bush for a good 30 to 40 seconds, maybe a full minute, before I realized what it was that I was seeing. There was a face looking at me from between and behind some branches. It was very flat, very big, dark brown, almost black. The eyes were black. I thought at the time the eyes were looking at me with curiosity or amusement. It did not look evil, menacing, or, well, you know. I don't remember a mouth or nose. I remember the hands being huge, gigantic, the size of baseball mittens. It seemed like I was looking at it for longer than more just minutes, but it could not have been that long. And all of a sudden, I was just terrified. I picked up my sister and screaming ran out of there. Everybody just followed me out. I was the only one who saw it. My friends wanted to know why I was so scared. I told them it was Old Man Walker, which, by the way, is a hermit who supposedly lived way back in the woods and would even shoot at you if he saw you. They were okay with that. I didn't want to believe what I saw, but it definitely was not human, and it was not an old man. I found it very comforting to know I was not the only one to have ever seen something so frightening. Thinking about my encounter, I was in no way threatened, and I don't know why I was so frightened, but I still wake up to this day with nightmares. That face was scary.